presentación con ustedes el ingeniero David Highland. David Highland trabaja como ingeniero de ventas en Trimble Buildings. Se graduó con honores del Instituto Tecnológico de Dublín en 2012 bajo el título de Geomática. Con varios años de experiencia, tanto en ingeniería como en levantamiento hidrográfico, cuenta con conocimiento profundo del ciclo de vida de toda la construcción. Con ustedes, David. <laughs> Everyone, thanks for coming today and thanks for inviting me to speak at the conference. A um, little brief uh, introduction. Um, my name is David Highland. I work with Trimble, uh, Trimble Inc. I've been with Trimble just over five years now. Prior to that, I was an engineering surveyor, so focused a lot on the civil applications, on the construction uh, platform, did a lot of monitoring work and so on. Then I jumped ship and uh, moved into Trimble. So as part of my, I suppose, um, experience in the, on the construction side, I leveraged uh, 3D laser scanning quite a bit. You know, we're hearing a lot about the constructible model, the BIM model. We want to make sure that that model is being translated correctly out into the field and it's being built correctly. You know, one of the best tools to do that uh, today is 3D laser scanning. So today we're going to look at you know, how we can leverage the point cloud inside of Tecla structures uh, and Trimble Realworks to you know, uh, obtain that information from the point cloud. Because point clouds contain a lot of information and we have the ability to extract that uh, from the software portions. Uh, we're going to look at some of the workflows. It's going to be a little bit more of a technical uh, deep dive into the software and then how we can share that information with you know, the subcontractors, the GCs out in the out in the field. So we'll take a, a quick look at uh, you know, the building portfolio. We'll look at you know, where we have live in the hardware section here um, with the fabricate and construct. So that's your robotic toll stations, your 3D laser scanners. But we're also going to look at the kind of the design concepts you know, in Tecla or in SketchUp or in AutoCAD, whatever you know, platform you're using out in the field. Uh, so we had the luxury of kind of, you know, scanning or doing like a history timeline of a phase two of a building uh, out in Denver, Colorado. So we've got the, you know, the construction model and then we've got the real world, how is that actually being built? And here's just kind of a nice little mesh between all those three uh, combined. So just to take a little kind of a deeper dive into, you know, Tecla structure. So for people that don't know Tecla, Tecla is um, a design build software for construction, uh, fabrication of steel and concrete, um, you know, down to the nuts and to the bolts um, of the constructible model. And you can get into the, you know, the really high level detail, you know, from the rebar, and, you know, that's one of the sections that we'll look at today uh, with 3D laser scanning is how can we, you know, QA, QC all of this process uh, out on the construction site. So at the beginning of uh, 2018, uh, Tecla now has the ability to import point clouds natively into the software. Um, so that gives us a lot more QA, QC applications with the point cloud. So you can kind of see there some of the you know, industry standard formats that you can bring in, your E57, uh, LAS files and so on, and the TZF, which is a native file format that comes out of the TXX scanner. Um, and we're allowed to now upload pretty large point cloud data sets into the model to compare uh, and contrast. And just a little bit for what people um, that aren't familiar with 3D laser scanning, um, it's the ability to capture the true world environment or the field conditions as is. Um, so just to kind of have a kind of a quick uh, screenshot, so if you look at the job site on the top right, that was actually from a job up in Seattle and Washington where we were doing core verticality on, on an elevator shaft to make sure that it was being built in the correct position that they were keeping it plumb and straight. So with the, with the TX scanner, you're able to you know, capture large areas in very short periods of time with very high accuracy you know, to compare the model to the real world. You know, typical ranges from the scanner go from 80 meters all the way up to 340 meters, just over 1,000 feet. So you can capture very large projects in a, in a very short period of time, indoor, outdoor, whatever it may be, if it's a renovation project 
um, and so on. And then the bottom image on the right is just of a, of a point cloud from you know, the job site. Pretty much they're just putting in the foundation, the core walls, uh, and so on. So the software that we use to process the point cloud or the information within the point cloud is a software called Trimble RealWorks. So the, so the two softwares that we look at is Tecla Structures and RealWorks. Uh, and you know, RealWorks is a kind of a dedicated point cloud analysis software too where we, we have the ability to extract out a lot of information. Because these point clouds aren't just for measuring, they contain a lot or a wealth of information. So if you look at the bottom right hand picture, you know, that's a floor slab heat map to see where are your high points and low points on the floor. Uh, the top right hand picture, it's showing you vertical steel, um, see how plumb the steel is when they're um, installing it out in the field. But a kind of couple of core functions that we're going to look at uh, today is flow flatness, core verticality, uh, and then physically comparing the model to the, to the real world. So we have all of these different platforms within Tremble. Uh, and what we like to do is try and combine all of these platforms together. And so the answer from Trimble's perspective is using Trimble Connect. Um, so for example, if we have a floor flatness uh, report or heat map that we wanted to, maybe we have a high point here and they're putting a tilt up wall on this slab. Obviously we want to know out the field where that high point is because we might need to grind it down. Uh, to make sure it's at the correct elevation. So we have the ability to you know, digitize in the software where that high point is, export it to Trimble Connect, and then bring that in into the robotic total station. So my field crew out the job site now can lay out that exact high point location so we might need to grind it down. So Connect is the platform that's kind of joining all this together, and it's allowing us to share the point cloud information with other contractors out on the field. So looking a little bit at the workflow in a little bit more depth, you go out with your 3D scanner, it's a line of sight object. Typically what I'll do is I'll place myself where the scanner is, I'll look around 360 to see what the scanner is going to capture. If I'm scanning a stair core or an elevator shaft, if I need to get to the other side, I'll pick the scanner up, move it to the other side, and it captures that, gives me a 3D environment. Then that information is built into uh, Trimble RealWorks. Think of RealWorks as like a puzzle solver. Um, you'll be able to upload all your stations and RealWorks then will give you a 3D point cloud um, and you can overlap that in with your model. And once you're in RealWorks, there's two ways you can go. You can go directly into, say, Tecla Structures or maybe if it's even Autodesk you're using, you can go into Autodesk, uh, whichever platform you're using. Um, or you can use the Tecla Point Cloud Manager. Maybe you don't have Trimble RealWorks. You can use the point cloud manager, it's just like a backdoor into Tecla um, to bring the point cloud in and manage it. And then once you've done all your analysis, you can then bring that into uh, Trimble Connect down there in the bottom to share that data with many contractors out in the field. And so once that workflow is completed, then we can kind of go back and forth between Tecla and RealWorks to you know, really extract out the valuable information from the point cloud to see what's happening out in the field. And this allows us then to make you new know, intuitive decisions, smarter decisions out in the field. Maybe we might have to update our model as the results that we get from our analysis. So looking a little bit at the Tecla workflow. So here's just kind of a quick video. So now Tecla has a little point cloud tab on the top right hand corner if you're using the latest version. I can very easily come in here, snap the point cloud into my model. I already geo-referenced the point cloud earlier on, so geo-referencing is a process um, that's putting the point cloud on the same coordinate system as our model. You don't want to physically manually move the point cloud, you want to shoot the point cloud in using survey control, because that allows you to really tell, hey, this you know, steel beam is two inches out of place relevant to the, to the physical steel model. And then we can you know, turn off the, the 3D model and start to inspect the point cloud in a little bit more detail. And say, for example, if this is a renovation project, not a new construction project, we can now start detailing straight off the point cloud. So if I come over here to the elevator, I'm oh, sorry, this is a stairwell, I can now snap to the point cloud as if I went out there with a robotic total station and measured the four corners. Now I just have a lot more information at my fingertips. Now you can see I have a 3D representation of where that stairwell 
uh, wall uh, is out in the field. So it gives you a lot of QA, QC uh, properties um, that you can you know, make decisions on essentially out in the field or in the, in the office. So we can turn on the 3D model again and we can do outer kind of inspections. You know, if, I, if I zoom in here, I, I can see you know, where that yellow steel is for the uh, elevator shaft is going to be, that there's no point cloud information currently there. So I now know that that steel member hasn't been installed yet. So it kind of gives you like a little progression report as well to what steel has been installed or you know, where the current job uh, is at, uh, at that perspective. So it's just a little quick workflow of how you can now support point clouds inside of the software. Um, the next step that we want to do, if we want to kind of get into a little bit of a deeper dive, is we can now export out a DWG, for example, from, from Tecla. I'm just going to focus on the main steel. I kind of removed the nuts and the bolts on that. I don't need that level of detail. I'm going to focus on the structural concrete and the structural steel, so I can export that out. So that brings me now into, into RealWorks, which is you know, the point cloud software analysis uh, platform. So before we kind of get into the analysis, just kind of give you a little bit more of a, a background on the project. Um, so you can see those little triangles represent where we place the scanner out in the field. So we just did 14 stations of a, of a setup. Um, you can see we had the advantage of doing a couple of station setups on the top of a neighboring building. A lot of people think this is actually drone footage. It's actually not. These, all of these scans were captured uh, at ground level all line of sight. So again, probably took me about an hour and a half to capture this job um, as it was progressing. And then the next step we can do is we can segment out the point cloud. We just want to focus on the new building. We don't care about the existing surrounding structure or, or whatever, whatever else is around us. We just want to focus around the new building. And then we can import the new building, the new structural model. And because, again, I have these geo-reference, they're both coming out in the exact same location, allowing me to tell what's happening out in the field. So once I have the two models lined up, I can go to the 3D inspection tool uh, built into the software. So we have the 3D inspection tool. Pretty much what it's going to do, it's going to create a heat map relevant to those two objects. So the green is my point cloud. The red is the physical 3D model, the structural model. So I can kind of set any tolerance that I want. So I didn't set any tolerance at the beginning. And you can see the software is doing its calculation. And it'll give you a legend on the left-hand side to kind of represent what those colors mean. You'll see that the third floor comes out pretty bright and vividly just because we don't actually have any of the structural model uh, there. So it's giving us kind of a contrast to say, hey, it, this is actually missing. Um, so what I can do is up on the top left-hand corner here from the filter inspection, I can actually hone in on my tolerance. So I can set this to a, to a three-inch tolerance, uh, and then it will remove those objects that I'm not as interested in. I'm just interested in what's been installed so far. So it does a quick calculation, and it removes those objects automatically for me. And now it kind of revitalizes the legend on the top left-hand corner to tell me what those colors represent to the physical model. So in a very short period of time, I can check all my beam deflections, deck deflections, even check the camber on the steel to make sure if they pour the right gradient of concrete as well too. Um, so I, I can see here that this steel beam is out a little bit and it's probably pulling out the horizontal steel a bit as well. And, you know, looking at the graph there, it's about an inch, an inch and a half off. So you know, if you're tying into that, it could be some critical decisions that you might have to adjust your model to uh, to make everything fit. So what I can do now is to kind of get a little a bit of a deeper dive into this. I can do a quick inspection. The nice thing with this filter as well too, it also removes other objects out in the field. So we say if there's people walking around, other equipment up on the steel, whatever it may be, it actually filters all that noise out. And it gives me a nice clean point cloud. And plus it's a lot smaller if I'm sharing that data set with anybody. But I want to inspect that model in a little bit more detail. So I can just turn on the 3D model as well too. Turn on the inspection analyzer map. And it'll give me my legend again. And I'll just switch on the model. And if I hold down on the end key on my keyboard, I can auto-focus on a steel member. And if I just turn it around, you can see the offset from the steel to the actual 3D model. And then you know, there's a, quite an array of you know, built-in tools uh, that we can now take an accurate measurement. So I can just pick the 
the plane snapping tool, snaps the plane to the physical cloud, and then I can snap that into the physical 3D model to see what that exact measurement is. So again, you can kind of see that it represents the similar color on the, on the scale. If I turn around to the other side, where the steel has a bit of a tighter tolerance, you see there's a lot more blue. Blue is telling us if you look at the scale that it's fit in the model uh, with a lot, um, lot better accuracy. If I turn it around, it doesn't have that same uh, offset, you know, both on the welding of the steel and on the flange of the steel. If I do a quick measurement, uh, again, so I'll just come over here to the ruler, pick the snapping ruler tool. I can zoom in and just pick the physical model. It's only about a quarter inch off, so you know if you're pretty happy with that, um, kind of, you can kind of sign off on certain objects. And I can just keep on inspecting, inspecting the steel. So it's kind of a great way to you know make sure everything is being constructed the way we built or built and designed it in whatever platform we're using, and then I can just do one final check up on the up on the higher floors just to show that offset and the overlap. So again, both on the web and on the flange, we have some pretty good tight uh, tolerances on the on the steel. So that's kind of you know focusing on the structural steel. We'll take a, a quick look at how you can do a similar process with the concrete. Um, so this is a, we did a, a couple of scans inside a stairwell. Um, also within this, you can kind of get like a 3D perspective view of what the job is looking like. Uh, we can pull in some measurements, we can pull in some angles to make sure that it's built so it has its 90 degrees angles and so on. But we can also do some 2D slices to see what the actual outer wall is doing. And pretty clearly and visually, um, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a bow coming in on the concrete wall here. So to kind of get a bit of a deeper depth in that, then we can upload the 3D model on top of it as well too, and you can kind of see where that's starting to kind of concave in a little bit. And again, we can take a little video overview of what that is. Nice thing with scanning as well too, you can also check all your embed placements as well too, and make sure that they're in the right spot before you bring steel out. But again, those little triangles shows you where we actually place the, place the scanner out on the field. And similar to what we did to the steel, uh, we isolated out the actual core itself. So on the, on the left hand side, you can make as many layers as you want and bring those into whatever platform you're using. I generally think it's a good practice rather than giving your detailer one big massive point cloud. It's kind of good practices, um, or good practice to give them the layers that they, that they need. But again, we can run the 3D inspection tool uh, and on the bottom left hand side then it'll create us uh, a new inspection cloud. I can switch that on, turn it on, and I can switch, because right now it's in true color, and we can just switch it to the cloud color, which will give us our heat map or our deviation skill. So I can kind of even see at the top of this that is starting to um, meander a little bit, but the kind of worrying thing was inside, when you look inside, you got this huge red um, deviation on the wall, that's what you were seeing earlier on in that 2D, uh, that 2D print uh, shot. But we can now grab the view cube and you know, really start to do a little bit more of a deeper dive and see exactly what happened. So luckily enough for this contractor, it was a stairwell and not an elevator shaft, so it didn't have as his critical criteria, and he didn't have any critical tie-in points um, to this particular location. But I can just turn this to a bit of a skew angle, uh, and take some quick measurements. So again, you can see, you know, there's about a three inch uh, deviation on that particular, on that particular um, wall. Again, I could turn on the 3D model as well too, and inspect this in a little bit more detail. So a lot of what we're trying to show with the point clouds is not to kind of point the finger at somebody, it's to help, you know, make decisions that, hey, if, you know, if this was an elevator shaft and we're bolting steel to this particular wall, we can now make adjustments before our contractors get out there um, and fix it. Because um, obviously, you know, if they're installing an elevator, they've got a certain finite period, you know, if they have to make adjustments, you can make adjustments ahead of time before the contractor comes out um, out there. So it's giving you that extra level of uh, detail. 
The next step we can look at is talking a little bit more about the, the floor inspection. So I can kind of jump in, you can see this is a, a larger project. I think there was about maybe 50 or 60 scans uh, that was captured. Uh, we can also check the FF and FL reporting functionality within, um, within the point cloud. So you know how flat my floor is, how level my floor is. Maybe you're doing a warehouse, they have pretty strict uh, regulations on the FF and FL functionality. Um, so we can come in here maybe and have the luxury of scanning the, the job site before you know, they start to bring the equipment in or it's a, it's a post scan. We actually have the ability to automatically extract out just the floor uh, from the data. So with a few clicks of a, of a button we can hit extract and then the software will try, try and interpolate what the floor is. So if there's people walking there, it'll kick them out, remove them out of the software and it just leaves me the floor. And if I need to do any uh, finite uh, tuning of the, of the point cloud, I can do that manually as well too. So again, you can kind of see if I just zoom in how it removes the railings, it removes some of, uh, some of the conduit in the background there as well too. And I can now create the floor as its own physical layer. Uh, and again, I can you know, export this out to uh, the contractors as well too as its own physical slab. That little circle that you see in the bottom right hand corner, that's where the scanner is actually positioned Every time you do a scan, you'll always have a little bit of a blind spot directly over the scanner. But next time you move the scan to a, a second location, 90% of the time that little blind spot gets covered in. But now we can uh, launch the FFL uh, functionality. So I'm just going to focus on a small, small southeast corner of the building here so I can you know, section in that window. So once I've got my area defined, I can now go to the, my toolbar and now define a test area. And once I you know, double click and close it, it'll give me an area of calculation of how big that surface area is. And on the bottom right hand corner, it'll automatically calculate how many sample runs I need to pull on that floor slab to give me the correct um, calculation readings of that floor. And you can see it's constantly updating on the bottom right hand corner as well to how many currently has. So I'm at 90, I need 107. Um, but I'll, just, I'll probably do a little bit overkill on this floor. Um, but I can constantly pull these sample runs. And each sample then will tell me the FF and FL report of this, of this slab. So traditional ways of doing this is actually going out with a dipstick method. It's a very manual process. Um, this is a, a you know speeds up that workflow um, quite a bit. Um, you can go out and scan areas uh, very quickly with just one scan. A typical time for a scan you're looking at about four, uh, sorry, two to four minutes. Um, but now you can see we've got enough uh, samples. We can now hit the reporting functionality, and it's going to say, hey, these are all based off of the ASTM standards. It's pretty much an industry standard for concrete. I can come in here, create a quick report. Call this wasn't very intuitive with my name in project report. Um, and now we can come in and put in our project specifications. So I'll pretty much just leave and kind of default them. I might just change the last one here. And it spits me out a report. And it's going to tell me then if I passed or failed. So you can see I pretty much failed all my FL. Uh, and there's a reason for that, which you'll see in the next, uh, the next video when my FL uh, had failed this particular report. was because my floor. Uh, wasn't very level. Um, so the next one we can jump onto is the physical floor fl uh, heat map. So similar to what you're seeing with the steel and the concrete, we can do something similar with the floor um, to show you why that FL was failing earlier on. So again, I've already got my floor sampled out uh, from the previous one, so I can, I'm going to do a larger area for this example. And then I'll hit done. Then you can uh, define a grid spacing, so how often do you want a, a physical spot height? So I'm going to do a three inch grid spacing. And the next thing then you can choose a benchmark. So if you have a benchmark out on the job site, hey, this is you know, top of slab or finished floor level, you can pick that out of the job. Or maybe you know the elevation of what the slab is supposed to be. Maybe it's supposed to be 100 uh, feet above uh, uh, our elevation. You can punch that in there as well too. So once I've got my elevation um, sorted, I can also choose a tolerance. So what do I want to see in and out? So I'm going to do a pretty tight tolerance here. I'm doing a, 
an eight of an inch tolerance, I think. Yeah, an eight of an inch tolerance. So pretty much just going to calculate a map to show me what's in and out. So if it's above my tolerance, it'll turn red. If it's below my tolerance, it will turn blue. Uh, if it's gray, it means it's plus or minus the tolerance. And this is great for the NEP contractors as well too. Say for example, if you're going out into a renovation project and you're in a mechanical room, for example, and you know, obviously in AutoCAD or uh, Revit, you know, the floor is perfectly flat. But if you go out to a mechanical room, that's not always the case. And if you're going to design something on a perfectly flat floor, and you you know, you fabricate that without taking the floor into account. You know, you could be off by an inch or two uh, with your mechanical system once you get out to the to the real world. What this allows you to do is it allows you to, sh you know, choose multiple floor elevations uh, and to design your new mechanical system uh, around that. Um, you have the ability to export out a TIFF image. A TIFF image is a scaled one-to-one -one image that you can bring into Tecla, AutoCAD, Revit, uh, and overlap your maybe your walls or whatever uh, whatever you have. Um, and we can also export out all the high points, low points, actually put that into the robotic total station if we wanted to lay out that high area. So once I can um, did a quick uh, kind of overview, I just created that as its own separate object down in the bottom left hand corner. I can turn on the inspection map, turn on the, the station location so it's showing you kind of relevant to where the, where the point cloud captured. Then I can turn on the analyzer tool, and this is going to show us an exaggerated view of that slab. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner that's 000, zero, zero. That's the benchmark that we chose out of the field, and it's given us an exaggerated view of what the slab is at that particular elevation. So you can kind of see why our FL had failed on that particular uh, report that we did um, prior, because our slab is sloping quite a bit. So again, it's just you know prepping you with this information to make adjustments to to your model um, out in the field, and we can kind of pull it across as well too. So wherever you have maybe critical tying locations relevant to the floor, maybe you're putting steel on the floor, it's kind of critical to know how high, how level the floor is, um, and then what we can do uh, from this perspective then is we can come in here and start to digitize around that high area. So I can zoom in a little bit. I'm going to do this kind of pretty roughly, but I can choose my polygon tool. And I can pretty much just trace this out. The nice thing then, what I can do with this information is actually take it and relate it back out to the field. You know, we you now see contractors doing this. You know, in real time, they'll take the scanner out, have a have a um, a laptop out in the field with them as well too. They'll do one scan, and they'll make any adjustments to the concrete before it actually cures. So once I've got a kind of a quick outline uh, of the high area, I can now export that as a DWG or a polyline, and then export that directly up into Tremble Connect. And then once I'm in Trimble Connect, then I can pull that information into the robotic total station so the guys out in the field know exactly where that high point is uh, out in the field. Uh, and then the last kind of couple of things I kind of wanted to touch on uh, is the rebar QA, QC. Um, so a lot of the times we want to make sure that our rebar cages are vertical, that they're straight and that they're plumb, and that they're in the right position when we're putting up the shoring walls. We don't want the rebar sticking out. Uh, from QAQC purposes, that we, cause we need to have a certain clearance from the concrete. Uh, we can very easily go out, scan the job site again, so for, you know, we had the luxury of this building, and we can scan it multiple uh, stages, so we scanned it, we segmented out the point cloud, you know, just focused on the rebar cage, uploaded the 3D model, again, run the 3D inspection tool, and it'll give us pretty much a heat map to show us what the rebar is doing. This is kind of like the opposite we wanted to do with the structural steel. Now blue means it's bad because it's telling us the rebar is physically touching the outer wall, and we don't want that. Um, we want the rebar to be, you know, we say for example, if you're looking for like a two-inch clearance from the outside wall to the to where the rebar is, you want to kind of have that, you know, green-yellow color uh, on the rebar. 
Um, and then you can also, on the scale on the right hand side, you have the ability to you know, hone in or focus in on a certain area um, to isolate out so you're not having to you know, check all the areas that are you know, within your tolerance. You can you know, maybe just focus on the blue areas because those are the areas that you might need to adjust or tweak uh, out in the field. Now if we just do kind of a couple of close-ups, so uh, here's the top left-hand corner, so maybe that steel needs to be pushed in a little bit, uh, but we can kind of see here on the, on the front of the cage, um, you know, we've got our required uh, clearance, our required tolerance. So with all this information, you know, we want to share this with other contractors out on the job site or maybe other people within our organization, the detailers and so on. So one of the best ways to, to share the information is using uh, Trimble Connect. So from, straight from Railworks, uh, we can come in, cut out the point cloud, you know, the area we want to focus in on, uh, and export out an E57 or there are multiple formats. Typically, E57 is a pretty uh, good one for the industry standard. Uh, so we'll just come out, export out an E57, and now we're live in Triple Connect Desktop. Um, so this is where you can have all your NEP coordination, all your structural coordination, all in one platform. Um, and it gives you the ability then to publish this model uh, and share this remotely with any other person um, that you might be working with on the, on the project. So I can come in here, upload my E57. And one of the nice things that we were talking about, or I was mentioned yesterday with the, with the VR application, you now have the ability to, I suppose, get like a deep dive uh, into the point cloud. You get a total different perspective actually being immersed inside a point cloud from a QA, QC perspective, you know, versus seeing it on a 2D screen. Gives you kind of a better decision making, gives you a kind of better scope of how big that project might be, uh, and so on. But built into Connect, we've given you a lot more tools that you can manipulate the point cloud with uh, if you don't have a software like uh, RealWorks, for example. So we can come in here, we can change the density of the point cloud, we can change the size of the points itself, and we can also change the thickness, the depths, uh, and, and so on within the point cloud. We can also break the point cloud into different elevations, so we can set multiple elevations from the different, uh, from the different layers. And then if we actually had our point cloud classified as well to uh, broken in different classification layers, we could also break that information out into, into the point cloud. So this is a great kind of a tool to make sure that hey, these models that we're building from a coordination perspective and to make sure that we're all on the same, uh, the same boat from an MEP perspective, structural perspective, that we're not going to have any clashes out in the field. This is a great QA, QC tool uh, to do that. So I think that was pretty much it. Um, hopefully give you kind of guys a good understanding of where you guys can leverage you know, point clouds uh, out in the construction, how it can help you make better decisions. You know, prep for things out in the field, and uh, hope you guys um, enjoyed it. And I'll be out there out the Trimble booth. If you have any other questions or more in-depth questions, just let me know. Thank you.